through a Scottish prism, the programme that is unapologetically pro-Scottish independence and anti-Westminster rule. Everything we say here is viewed through a Scottish prism. Brought to you by Barhead Boy. Well, hi folks, and welcome back to Through a Scottish Prism. Lovely to have you back. It's been a few days since we last saw the beach chat. Hope you and yours are well. And uh, a lot been happening. A lot been happening in the last few days. What was that? Our what fourth or fifth Prime Minister in as many years. Um, all sorts of things going on. And to, to discuss all that, I am joined uh, by my good friends uh, from your, your used to seeing. And I'm starting with Eva Comley there, who is somewhere between Aberdeen and Club Manager. Hi, Eva. Hi, Roddy. Yep, I'm in Aberdeen on the Beach Boulevard, looking out onto a wild and windy North Sea and imagining just how much money there is out there in wind and wave power and oil and gas. Um, as Alex Salmon said last night on the We Alba Book Roadshow, which is the reason why we were in Aberdeen, what a country this would be if we could keep our resources for our own good. So good to be here again today, Roddy, and looking forward to a vibrant discussion because there's so much happening that's positive and beneficial for Scotland's future. Right, right, too. Also joining us is uh, Yvonne Ridley, who herself is up there in Aberdeen at the We Alba Book. Yvonne, welcome, my friend. How are you? Uh, great, but I'm uh, I'm no longer in Aberdeen. I'm back in the wet and windy borders, uh, where the the sun is trying to break through. And uh, yeah, as he Eva said, we've got so many natural resources, and um, and they're just being wasted. But a uh, great night in Aberdeen last night at a, a bar called the Blue Lamp. And it was heaving. It was packed to the rafters. Great crowd. Great questions. Uh, Alex Salmon was really on form, as was Neil Hanby, and it was uh, it was brilliant. And there was a great crowd there. Um, it was the atmosphere reminded me of the weeks coming up to um, Indie Ref One in 2014 you know the there's a sense of um anticipation well i'm sure you're right about alec and uh neil but i'm sure you and eva were big contributors as well i know you would be um and well yeah i were also joined from south korea by the old corporate cavalier himself mr phil boswell welcome back phil we missed you last week Unfortunately, you weren't with us in Stirling. How are you, my friend? No, okay, no, I couldn't make it back to Scotland. It was uh, Korea. So I'm currently a soul man. Soul man. Which is a wonderful thing. So I'm currently Good in Seoul, just now thoroughly enjoying life out in Seoul. Well, so let's we'll see what we can do. Hopefully they'll get better as we go on. And I am in sunny Dubai when I came to see you and greet my new granddaughter. Which what is you talk about? Beautiful. Oh, you're still here. Good. Yeah, I can see we're having some connection problems there, Phil. Anyway, um, yeah, it's been a heck of a week, Eva. Um, let's trust 45 days as Prime Minister, the shortest ever sitting for a Prime Minister. Um, and as an aside, she will receive £115,000 a year as an ex-Prime Minister for the rest of her life. Obscene amount of money for someone who's cost the country billions, who has done irreparable damage to the economy and the markets with her free marketing madness. Um, it's just another reason that you know makes me say, how can anyone still think that the union is the best way forward for Scotland? An appalling example to say, appalling, um, especially after her reverse Robin Hood budget, um, our Chancellor crashing in the pound, the markets dictating what would happen um, to, to pensions and funds and incomes, inflation well into double figures, shortages of food, people worried sick about fuel bills, a winter of discontent on its way, worrying about people who may not be able to 
looking at issues in the NHS, um, innumerable strikes, threatened or actual. And, you know, what have we got? We've got an SNP government elected on innumerable mandates to get us out of the union. And their reaction to this is not the reaction that Alex Salmond was talking about in Aberdeen on Friday, where we should have been saying, like the Irish did in the past, Westminster's weakness is Scotland's opportunity. Instead of this, the SNP, both at Westminster and in Holyrood, are bleating for yet another Westminster general election, and they refuse to say whether or not it'll be fought as a plebiscite. And indeed, my own MP, John Nicholson, should hang his head in shame because he was interviewed the other night and when asked a specific question as to whether it would be a plebiscite, said, we will have to wait and see well, Mr. John Nicholson and Miss Nicola Sturgeon, Scotland is fed up waiting. Emma Harper, MSP, had the temerity to lodge a motion in Holyrood the other day demanding a general election. Why the heck is an MSP demanding a general election? She should be lodging a bill in the Scottish Parliament for an independence referendum. You know, they really need to get their head out of whatever place it is that they're stuck, sand or elsewhere, and start thinking about the mandates on which they were elected and look after the people of Scotland and get back up out of Westminster and start working for this country the way that they were supposed to be doing. Uh, one of the things, Evelyn, I find the most ridiculous of it all is a few weeks ago, just 45, 46 days ago, all the Tories, you know, mm -hmm. Douglas Ross and all this, saying, oh, the great choice, so Liz Trust and Fantastic choice for the country. And then we should have our budget. Oh, this is a fantastic budget and you couldn't get better. And it's time the SNP, Scottish Government, got on board and supported this. And then two days later, they're all going, well, actually, we think it's, you know, this is rubbish and Liz Truss has got to go. And, you know, the same ones that are against Boris. I'm now talking about him as one of the favourites. Whatever they put in front of them, they'll just say, well, yeah, that's the best. That's the best. It's the worst. It doesn't matter who gets in. Scotland doesn't come out of it well. No, not at all. Um, apart from the departure of, of Liz Truss, I can exclusively reveal that uh, the person behind the Truss exit is none other than John Nicholson MP. According to a John Nicholson tweet written by John Nicholson, John Nicholson uh, is the reason that Liz Truss went. It's an incredible tweet. I mean, talk about the ego has landed. He says, John Nicholson condemns Liz Truss for anti-trans rhetoric. She resigns shortly afterwards. So there you go. Mystery solved. It was down to, uh, to John Nicholson. I mean, you know, this is a, a, a guy burdened by his own self-importance. Um, when in fact, as Eva said... These people should be jumping up and down now, seizing on the opportunity of the chaos that's in Westminster and demanding that Holyrood be recalled, that an emergency motion be put through, that, uh, you know, the country is in a crisis. Scotland mustn't get sucked down into uh, this mire and the case for independence is more urgent than ever. And people would be rallying to the cause. But no, all they're doing is they're obsessed with, uh, with a general election, which is not going to happen. It's, you know, if there was a general election tomorrow, the Tories would be crushed. So why on earth would they want to vote for a general election? Absolutely. Absolutely. I've been saying this for a long while. With an 80 majority and the polls going against them, why would they? I mean, you know, it doesn't matter what anyone says. Plus the fact the right wing press will protect the Tories. We know that. But, Phil, you, you were down in Westminster for a time. Uh, and the day before, there was, of course, this farce in the lobbies uh, where it was never been seen before, they said, where the whips were literally pushing people into the other lobby and there was fisty cuffs and goodness knows what else. It just shows how farcical Westminster is and everything about it. And the sooner we're out of there, the better. 
Yes, the, the mask has certainly slipped and it's not acceptable from John Nicholson and, and uh, who gave away the, the game that we don't have a plan. So Nicola, what is the plan? What's the plan for Indy? We've been asking for a long time. Most of us are in the position we're in outside the SNP because we know this. And as I've said before, this is a race to the bottom. Regardless of the bad actors, uh, the latest being Trust and Quarting, some other patsy with a handsome payout reward and unlimited ego polishing. We'll take it to the board, Big Pharma, the central banks, the military industrial complex, hedge funds, City of London, just pay these puppets to implement the, the policies they choose. The globalists, the financial capitalists required to be implemented. And they know that the people are turning on the Tory coloured Muppets. So they need to change colour to Labour coloured Muppets, as the punter in England is more likely to accept more austerity from someone with a red rosette than, than from a blue. And of course, it suits the uh, Tories because Labour can then take the blame for the end game, which is nigh. What's coming is, is darker than most people will believe. And after the collapse, the, the cost will be human life and misery for the 90%. And the benefit will be the 10%, but especially the 1% who make billions out of this human misery. That's about to unfold. So then the Tories can bring their A-team into the resume and to resume the cycle of greed, theft and class war. So don't expect to see top players from the Conservatives coming in and take the reins here. They know it's a ride to the bottom. And remember again, as I said last time, there's more money to be made with a few in a crash than when the economy is doing well. So they'll snap up all the property and business and we'll lose small and medium-sized enterprise, which employ 50% of the, the people in Scotland. And, and the corporations will be financing you, heating you, teaching you, taking care of your health and feeding you. And you should have figured out by now, if the corporation is feeding you, you're eating shit. So I see Murdoch as the... Uh, I'm Murdoch and dead with Blair the last time this stunt was pulled. It's a disgrace. We should be seized in this opportunity. Well, we should be. We should indeed. Eva, I mean, the front runner so far who have come through to become the new Prime Minister, um, which is going to be done very quickly. This time it's only going to take a week. And there's a, a bit of irony in that, that the Tories are going to ask their members to vote online. Um, and part of that, um, which is funny, is that the Tory government brought in legislation that does not allow trade unionists to go on strike by voting online. They've got to be in person and vote, but they could bring in a Prime Minister, number five. But Sunak, Morden, and I find myself shaking my head with it. Boris seems to be one of the, if not the favourite to be recalled. It is farcical. Well, I suppose it's the usual that we've become new to. It's one law for them and another law for the rest of us. And they do all they can to, to hope both, um, in, in effect, the working class, those who join trade unions for all the reasons that we know about. The trade unions are the real opposition now, though, aren't they? Because we know that Stanmore is just Tory light. And we know that the SNP are actually no opposition at all in Westminster. In fact, they're, when they're not being ignored, they're a laughing stock. Um, and, you know, it's, it's really pretty awful to see the media hype up this issue around Boris. He's not our pal. We shouldn't be calling him Boris. It's Johnson. He's a liar. In effect, he's a thief. He's corrupt. He's facing another investigation. There's investigations of him that have not yet been fully completed or reported upon. And we're supposed to think that it's okay to even contemplate his potential return as the, the leader of this in the, in the commas, United Kingdom. Most other countries of the world, if they had been looking at the return of a previous corrupt leader, would be front page news on the BBC and across um, you know, all our smart media where we'd be pointing out how ridiculous, corrupt and illegal their behaviour is. We'd be shouting about other regimes who ought not to be behaving this way and we'd be talking about how they should be expelled from or censured by all the international organisations. Instead of that, we've got selfies um, and you know photos taken sneakily on the aeroplane, bringing him and his family back from Dominica or wherever they were, um, so that we can see here he is. You know the hero's return, as if he's going to be the great saviour to get us out of the hook that he got us into in the first place. Um, you know, 
just to see the SNP shouting about a Westminster election in the midst of all of this, when they should be saying, hold the bus, this is the ideal opportunity for us to say enough is enough. You know, Westminster is pretty well at a standstill as it is. If, as Alex Salmond has said repeatedly, the SNP were to use the Parnell tactics, the SNP MPs with a spine, if there are any, could be bringing that place to a standstill on a daily basis and making Westminster dance to a Scottish jig. Do we seriously think that's going to happen with the likes of Ian Blackford in charge when all he does is stand up and say, Scotland will not be ripped out of the EU. Oh, look what happened. Paint it on the side of a bus. Stop Brexit. Try and tell the English that they're not allowed to have the democratic outcome of the vote that they supported. You know, it's utter farce. Um, beyond anything that I suppose anybody would have had a dreamt of in 2014 on the day before the referendum when we were being told if you if you vote yes to Scottish independence, you'll leave the EU. If you vote yes to Scottish independence, you'll be skint. If you vote yes to Scottish independence, your fuel bills will rocket and your oil will run out. Gee whiz, if you could rewind to the 18th of September 2014, how very different I think the outcome would have been. And it's it's that memory and the knowledge of all those lies and promises that the SNP ought to be doing something about now, today and every day, um, rather than watching this drama continue to unfold. Yeah, I mean, that's, Eva's touched on it there, they you know, that in effect, uh, Westminster is absolutely paralysed at the moment. But it was paralysed for the four months before, waiting on the outcome of the new Prime Minister. There's really nothing been happening down there that would, you know, that would have stopped our Scottish MPs from taking action on independence. Now, back in January 2020, Nicola Sturgeon promised us a Scottish constitutional convention. Where is it? It should be called immediately. Well, this is what's focusing uh, their attention. I don't know if you can see that. I've seen off uh, three PMs and this one won't be the last. She said that last week. And this is what they're retweeting. The SNP are retweeting uh, just now. No focus on independence. Uh, they're obsessed with Westminster. Um, as we've been talking, that bloated piece of privilege, bleep, 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 Boris Johnson has, uh, has landed uh, back in Britain now. There should be universal outrage, but as you said before, you know, the media will protect him. The Daily Mail are already writing about the dream ticket of Johnson Sunak. And, you know, just cast your mind back 40-odd days ago, it, uh, um, it was Sunak who stuck the knife in to uh, Boris Johnson's back and uh, by walking out of uh, the Treasury. So whether this is a carefully coordinated evil plan by uh, the old Etonians and, and uh, who knows... But it, it is a mess. People are suffering. It's, uh, pensioners are still wondering, you know, about uh, surviving the winter. People are waiting for the bills to arrive. And absolutely nothing has been done. Um, if ever there was a time for the Scottish government to launch the lifeboats, now is the time. In fact, the lifeboats are there waiting for us to jump in. Um, the opportunity is there. But the SNP are just so addicted to the power in Westminster that uh, they've lost the plot. And yeah. people can consense this. You know, now is the time. We're all the SNP talking about independence. No, not at the top, they're not. No. Um, talking about John Nicholson, um, he was interviewed on, um, I think, what do they call it, that green outside the House of Parliament, uh, Eva. And uh, he was saying, when he was asked, you know, will this be a plebiscite? Oh, let's wait and see, he said. What do you want to wait and see, John? Well, 
I think that encapsulates the, the whole ethos of the modern day current SNP position. Um, it is abundantly clear that the First Minister's promise in January 2020 of a constitutional convention was another one of these carrots. Um, interestingly, though, the Constitutional Convention, again in Alex Salmon's words, um, he says, every nation which has ever claimed its independence has had something like a constitutional convention. It is a key instrument in the political struggle to obtain Scotland's self-determination. You know, a way back since before 1320, we've had this issue about the sovereignty of the people of Scotland. And that sovereignty currently rests with those MPs and MSPs elected to conduct the exercise and self-determination that the vast majority of the people of Scotland want. They don't need to be down in Westminster on a daily basis, standing up and making stupid speeches. What they should be doing is directing themselves, you know, laser focused, single minded on how to get our independence, because the point of independence is to work to the benefit of the common wheel of the people of this country. It's not to pander either to corporate interests or to the media or to the very few privileged or entitled. We want to look after our citizens. We don't want to be subjects. We don't want to be arguing about whether um, we spend money on the NHS or on education. We want to spend it on both. We don't want people worrying about eating or heating. And we don't want to see statistics on people freezing to death or children malnourished or being admitted to hospital with rickets or, you know, all these horrible things that are coming back again because the country is slowly descending into the most awful chaos and poverty. I mean, you know, a, a dreadful statistic, Roddy, that's one that's very dear to my heart is to do with drugs issues. And, and I'll read this to you. This is from my friend Anne-Marie Ward. For the 18,000 problem drug users and 130,000 problematic alcohol users in the Greater Glasgow and Clyde area, there are only 23 publicly funded rehab beds, meaning one person in six and a half thousand will get the chance to go to rehab. Now, we know there's lots of reasons why there are problems with addiction in Scotland, but by far the worst is poverty. We can get our people out of poverty. We can treat addiction. We can give people hope. We can create prevention areas. We can create recovery. We can look after our people. We can change that cycle if and only if and when we've got economic levers across the board. Um, this begging bull to Westminster pleading, in effect, saying to the manager of the other team, is it all right if we get a wee kick at the bar now and again, pal? It's not on anymore. We've been subservient long enough. If we carry on like this and we, we, we ask for a Westminster election, we're proven we're not just too wee and too poor. We really, really are too stupid and too cowardly. You know, uh, Yvonne said it on Friday night in, in Aberdeen. We've got to get angry. People are hungry. They're dying. They're cold. They're scared. They're suffering unnecessarily. And it's in Nicola Sturgeon's hands to turn this all around. One phone call, one phone call to, to Alex Salmon to say, and, you know, for the benefit of the people of Scotland, let's get this thing done. Unite the independence cause because our people demand it and they deserve it. Hang whatever it is that happened in the past. Look to the future. Save lives. Save the country. And make this country the country it should be for one and all. Absolutely. Well said. Um, the one thing, I feel I noticed the recent opinion polls, which I take with a huge pinch of salt, um, they're more about forming a public opinion, in my opinion, than actually measuring it. But they've shown that we're going to lose six Tory MPs. Great. That's fantastic. And they're going to replace them with six Labour MPs. You know, it's uh, you know, as I said in a, in a tweet, if you think the answer to the problems of Scotland and the United Kingdom are Labour, you're asking the wrong bloody question. You're on mute, Phil. You're muted. You're muted. Yeah, if it was, if you're asking the, if you change out to Starmer and his crew, it doesn't matter. They're they're, they're not real Labour, the old school Labour. They're just they're really red Tories. This it's actually accurate. It's true what it says. It won't change in for the reasons I, I I spoke to earlier. This this is a this is 
a people in England are more likely to accept more austerity if it comes from somebody with a red rosette because they, they, they know they're going to get it from the Blues and they've had enough and they want something different. They're not going to get anything different. It's exactly the same. And it's designed this way. And it's much, much bigger. Going on with what uh, Evil was saying, it's horrendous. According to the Financial Conduct Authority, about 8 million people in the UK are in deep financial trouble. And Labour ain't going to change this. This is the Financial Conduct Authority study. And that's before this recession and mortgage and rent payment crisis kicks in and the Central Bank, Bank of England, puts in place a bond-selling uh, policy. Check out Richard Murphy on this. The Bank of England have started aggressively selling government bonds, gilt-edged bonds, as a result of quantitative reason to force interest rates up as fast as possible. And therefore, if you've got a mortgage, the bank is trying to break your fi finances. Now, the Bank of England is supposed to be independent. They're imposing yet more austerity, which Starmer and the Red Tories are going to do um, on working people through monetary policies. Yeah, we can blame Andrew Bailey, the Bank of England, and trust and hunt the politician or rhyming, rhyming slang you choose in the case of Jeremy Hunt. This is class war. As the government says, it can't borrow to pay for pension increases, social care, NHS, or improving education or the facilities to help those, because I'm, I'm we even on this, the drug problem's horrific. And yet it will sell bonds to raise interest rates and hurt the working people further. This is deliberate. Think, people. Why do the programmes you watch on television get an expert on from the City of London? to tell us what we should do in a crisis. To hell with these shysters. They're the last people we should be listening to. Instead, watch the big short and understand what these shysters are really up to. It's, it's disgusting. And, and you know, it's also deliberate. And this is a bigger picture. This, this, this leads to the demise of the West. Europe is folding in front of our eyes. It's the deliberate sabotage of the EU, which has got the potential of being a socialist force for good. But it's controlled by neoconservatives, so Europe is eating itself. There's a brilliant Gideon Rachman Financial Times article. And answer this. His question is, what have these problems got in common? France has started to block trains from Italy to intercept illegal migrants from North Africa. A Europe sceptic party has made big gains in Finland. Political squabble in Portugal has raised doubt about the country's ability to negotiate a bailout. And there's growing demands in Greece for the country to default on its debts. The answer... These are symptoms of the same problem. The political understandings that underpin the European Union that Scotland and its people subscribe to are beginning to unravel. And these and, 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 and the socialist hopes, that understanding is a socialist hope we have in Europe for humanity. Because with a united socialist Europe, we have a representative power for the people in the global game. And the Soros's of this world will not allow it. And that is why Europe's finest achievement, the EU, has been infiltrated, undermined, and has now been dismantled by those who would keep on, on their knees. So the, need, the problems Yvonne's talking about, the problems Eva's talking about, our response to this needs to be nothing short of revolution. That's uh, certainly revolutionary talk, Phil. Um, Yvonne, I, I noticed an article today, I haven't managed to read it completely, but I noticed that in Wales, like Cymru, and the Green Party, who are also a very pro-independence party in Wales, have decided to come together for a convention, would you believe, um, and uh, fight for independence. Well done down in Wales. It's exactly, and as Eva said earlier, it's time for Nicola to, you know, grow up and unite the movements. She broke the you. There's no, I'm sorry, it's indisputable. She broke the unity of the, the Yes movement. And it's only how they can bring it back together again. It needs done now for the Scottish people. Well, of course, the Green Party in Wales, are, like the Green Party in England, are quite a different animal to uh, the Green Party in, in Scotland. In fact, um, I think the Scottish Greens have declared UDI on, uh, yeah. on the Green Party. You know, they're wanting to, to go it alone. Um, Nicola Sturgeon, yeah, we know she's responsible. You know, there might be some merit in what Liz Truss said. God help me for saying that. But uh, maybe we should just ignore her and start to push, not for a general election and a regime change in Westminster, but one in Hollywood. That's, that's where our real problems are. You know, the, the independence lifeboat is there waiting and the 
the SNP MPs and, and MSPs are like rabbits trapped in a headlight. You know, they, they can't see beyond this dream that uh, the Tories are going to be completely wiped out in Westminster. Starmer uh, and his Tory lights will take over and the SNP will then become the opposition party. If that is the, their total ambition, then God help us all. You know, yeah. they're, they're so obsessed with matters in Westminster and they actually believe that they will become the official opposition. Um, and, and the next thing you know is we'll, we'll have that SNP MP uh, not going for the deputy speaker's job. He'll want the speaker's job. It's the trap in Westminster. They've been completely, um, well, I, I, I said at the, the conference, you know, they're, they're displaying the signs of Stockholm Syndrome. They've been down there so long, they've been completely intoxicated and drugged by the, the power of Westminster, and they're not interested in Scotland. No, they're not. I mean, as I was saying, you know, and I didn't finish it, my fault, um, but Westminster corrupts and Westminster is corrupted. They did it with the Irish Parliamentary Party, and they were replaced by Sinn Féin and Sinn Féin Independence. We then sent down the Red Clydesiders. They get corrupted and became lords, the Red Clydesiders became lords. We then said, it's OK, we're sending down the SNP and they have become corrupted. That's just the fact, Eva. They have um, they've allowed themselves to become part of the British establishment. And it seems to me, when Nicola's speaking, she's more worried about offending a, a demographic that will never, ever support her or the, the, the Pledge of Independence. She seems more worried about upsetting them and happy to upset pure independence fighters like us. Absolutely. You know, conversations with Liz Truss about how you get your picture on the front page, front cover of Vogue are a bit of a giveaway. Um, I cannot understand for the life of me why Ian Blackford doesn't see that he's a laughing stock in the House of Commons. You know, they refer to him as the crofter. They laugh at him when he gets up to speak. There's lots of snide comments to his face and behind his back. That's an insult to the people of Scotland. And how he stands up there and says what he says and actually thinks he's having any positive impact beats me. Um, you know, we elect SNP MPs to negotiate and obtain independence. We don't elect them to go down there and get comfy with their, with their feet under the table indefinitely. And the very fact that we've got not only MPs but MSPs calling for a Westminster election before the decision of the Supreme Court is out says it all. If you think about Nicola Sturgeon's exclusive reveal of the referendum date and the process, what she said was, we'll proceed to the Supreme Court if the decision there goes in our favour, which it won't, we'll have a referendum next October. If it does not go in our favour, the next general election to Westminster will be a plebiscite. So what she's banking on, and John Nicholson's banking on, and Ian Blackford wants, and Emma Harper wants, and every last one of them wants, every one of them, is we don't get a Supreme Court decision. There is a general election. Another 40 odd or 50 SNP MPs go down to Westminster, looking forward to another five years on that bus. And then after that, we get the Supreme Court decision. It's a no. And the outcome is, Nicola says, I've done my best. It wasn't my fault. We've had the general election, the game's a bogey. And what that means then is we're left to look again at the next Holyrood election, which at the moment would be 2026. And again, looking at trying to get a super majority for independent support and MSPs to be elected. None of that process would be necessary had we an SNP Scottish government with gumption and guts and determination to fulfil respectfully the mandates on which they have been repeatedly elected. If they don't have the guts and they don't have the gumption and they don't have the political ability, they should stand aside. Because at the moment, the people of Scotland are not being paid enough. Their cost of living is too high. We talk about fuel poverty. 
we talk about food poverty, we talk about period poverty, we talk about mortgage interest rates rises, repossessions, debt default, and all of that arises from not having the full economic levers within our own country to do the best that we can by our own people. And those that are elected to achieve that ought to get it done or get out the road and let those of us led by the man who knows how to deliver get on with it. Quite right. Um, Phil, you've been down in Westminster, you know which operates, and you know there's MPs down, SMP MPs, without naming names, but a big load of them, who've never had it so good, who've never earned so much money, never had so many expenses, and it's, it's very difficult to get someone's attention when their salary depends upon it. Yes, uh, they're they're not going to uh, uh, jeopardise their own position when their salary depends on it. And you've, you're right; they've never had a good. Most of these people are in a position where they're paid beyond their ability. Now, he, here's the distinction between politicians who are, for example, down there running a country. If you're in a government, there's a there's a mantra in in Westminster and governments all over the world that is, I would trade one year in power for five and five in opposition. Why? Because you, you can implement regulations, you can put legislation in place, you can shape the country, albeit for a, a period of time, but you actually get to govern. The rest of them are just whingers, complaining. That's what the opposition does. They say, oh, we keep them, we put them in check. Nonsense. Every legislative body has got, say, 13 representatives, and there's a majority for the ruling party. And all they do is vote together and all your objections are wiped out, all your suggestions are thrown out, and they get to write the legislation they want to write. So what you're doing is just whinging. You're complaining. Now, if you can sell that philosophy to the public and they want to buy into it, then fair enough. But we're wasting our time down there. This is about individuals who, I would say, out of the 56 that went down, I would say about... Eight of us, eight, maybe ten at a push, actually lost money getting in. Everybody else was on the make and couldn't believe their luck. Most were accidental politicians like me. You know, because we didn't expect to get that. You know, we were getting in, we're fighting for the cause, we'll fly the, fly the flag, we'll do it. But I haven't committed to do it, I did it. I walked away from the oil and gas uh, jobs as a commercial and contracts manager. And, you know, I'm not going to, can, you can't whinge about it. You can't, you can't be getting, what, £66,000 or something like that and say, this is a bloody disgrace. What am I doing down here with this pish? <laughs> it's just not going to, it's not going to go down well, you know. So, um, but that was the reality. And there's a number is like, uh, well, I, I wouldn't name names, but that's how it works. Um, but the vast majority, you're absolutely right, they're quids in and they're delusional. They think, all right, I've been down here. What the look? Tory guys are telling me we're going to go off after this and go into business and get a chief exec role, the, the revolving door, revolving doors, the article from uh, Private Eye that I've mentioned several times before, read that, that's how it works for the Conservatives. And for Labour, typically, they would go into government, um, into a, a job with the civil service or into the job in local government, and that's how they would get their pay off for their time. And they all get looked after. What they don't understand is that you're, if you're anti-establishment, as any decent, self-respecting, independentista should be, and you're certainly labelled with it, whether you believe it or not, then you're actually, you're, you're I wouldn't say blacklisted, but, you're, but you, are, you, you are. You are tarred with that brush, and you will find it difficult to get a job. The delusion will think, well, I'm on 66, I'll settle for 40. So what did you do to be 40? I was a councillor on 15. Is that right? And, and what other skills have you got? Well, uh, I used to work at McDonald's. Nothing wrong working at McDonald's, but you're not going to get 40000 a year, mate. You know, stop deluding yourself. They think because they're down there and they're getting this cash, you can't believe it. Oh, this is all for me. And a house and, and, and the big I am. My ego gets polished, feed the head. It's a human trait. And, I, and, I'm not, and I'm not blaming folk for getting on in life. There's nothing wrong with that aspiring to get better and do better. But you've got a contract with the Scottish people to free us and get us our independence. You do not go down there and, and fill your own trough. You go down there and you do what we want, or by God, we'll take you down, and that's what we should be doing. It's um, quite worrying, Yvonne, 
that we're, we're no closer than we were on the 18th or the 19th of September 2014. If anything, we're further behind. We're, there's just been no movement forward. And, and I do not understand why a lot of people cannot see that. Well, you know me, my glass is forever half full. And I think um, because of the presence of Aleppo now, we have given people renewed hope and fanned the flames of independence once again. Uh, there's still a, a lot of good people in the SNP who've yet to wake up that they've been lied to. Um, but when they do, you know, I really do think things will start to move. And, and those uh, SNP MPs, you know, we voted them in, we can vote them out. It, it's as simple as that. And as Phil said, you know, they, they can uh, get back and, and uh, start doing what they were doing before that they, they were elected. Um, it's shameful that uh, the people of Scotland are being constantly betrayed, but it's even, I mean, we expect it of the Tories, but we don't expect it from our own. And that's what's happened in the SNP. In fact, at the conference, when we had uh, that wonderful uh, Scottish prism uh, in Stirling, I asked who had been a member of, of the SNP and virtually every hand went mm -hmm. up. Um, and, you know, of course, we'll not find out, but there are rumours that the membership of the SNP is now down to 25,000. If that's the case and they've still got all these expensive spads uh, on fantastic wages and, and giving all this bad advice, you know, the the SNP will implode soon. And, and uh, the, the whole business about a Westminster um, election is, is a total distraction, I think, from the party's very real internal problems. Yeah, but Eva, one of the things about the expense of SPADs that Yvonne's revealing to, the total wage bill for the SNP is $1.2 million a year for those expensive SPADs. Um, and that's exactly the money they get from Westminster in short money, $1.2 million. So it's to their interest to keep it the status quo, to keep all this big entourage. And to me, these SPADs are, a bit, are not, you know, they're in incapable of selling a drink to a dying man in the desert. They're clueless. They've got no strategic nous at all. I think the difficulty for me, Roddy, is I've lived a life. You know, I've got a profession, I've got qualifications, I've got a business. There are some things that I know a lot about and there are some things that I know next to nothing about. Um, the difficulty with a SPAD in the main, particularly in the SNP, is they've come up through the ranks. They have little, if any, real life experience and that's just the way of it. And unfortunately, a similar position has begun to apply to many of their elected politicians. So they become incapable of making decisions based on life experience and at times common sense. I at times think I've got more common sense in my amputated big toe than some of those that remain in power today. So I would tend to the view that politicians uh, elected by Scots, both at Holyrood and at Westminster, would do well to get out on the road with a road show similar to the We Alba book tour road show and speak to real people about real issues, such as go to Dunfermline and speak to my pal Leanne Terva about the issues that are affecting her people, um, you know, her friends, her neighbours, her family. She spoke most eloquently at our conference in Stirling last week about addictions and, and all the issues that lead to that and arise from that. Um, others like Leanne, um, include those who speak about the need for a living wage. Um, I read only this morning about issues regarding the lack of decent public transport, especially in buses in Scotland, where if you live between Perth and Dundee, would you believe it, 
and you're a man working in a in an office in Dundee where you're due to start at eight o'clock in the morning, you have to get out of your bed at five to stand and wait for a bus that's due to arrive at five minutes to six that often doesn't turn up, but it's a five minute to six bus that gets you into Dundee for half past six and you have to wait an hour and a half out in the cold for your office to open because the provision of bus services is so poor. The return journey from Dundee to Perth for a different girl but on a similar route, um, sometimes the last bus doesn't turn up. So she's standing at 10 o'clock at night, at night in the middle of nowhere with no means of getting home. I read about another woman in the same article who works um, in, a, in a pub in Perth and if the last bus doesn't turn up for her, she's £40 for a taxi. You know, these are the real life issues that are affecting people because the very infrastructure in Scotland is not getting the attention or the investment that it deserves. If you can't get to your work or you can't get home from your work, how are you meant to live? And that's before you get into the realms of cuts to universal credit, issues regarding what is a living wage, what is a decent pay rise, why have we got working people? single working people having to go to food banks you know tommy sheridan said it here before swiss bank for them food banks for us working folk at food banks you know it's just the modern day soup kitchen we've still got homeless being fed out on the streets of glasgow winter approaching still no got premises you know charities having to look after people because governments that's Holyrood and westminster are failing us daily you know i don't understand actually why there is not as as the others have said outright rebellion and revolution in scotland let alone the rest of the uk what are we waiting for our rulers are not doing what they're told they're squandering money right left and center on junk they're creating third sector organizations to whom they give money and they then employ people to decide who to get that money to rather than going by a direct route. You know, what, what happened to the laptops that were promised during the pandemic? What about the free bikes that were promised during the pandemic? What about the rollout of, you know, school meals right across nursery, primary and secondary? Where is all that gone? It hasn't happened. Why has it not happened? Because somebody somewhere is making promises that are either uncosted or they're unfulfilled because they've divested the money elsewhere. And none of that would have had to happen if we were already on the road to independence. And we would have been there if the people of Scotland had done what they were implored to do last year and had voted Alba in on the list. Had they done that, we'd have been sitting there with 16 to 20 less or fewer unionist MSPs and 16 to 20 Alba MSPs and by God, Every one of those Albert MSPs would have had the guts and the gumption to lodge that referendum bill in that parliament and to move it. Yeah, the problem is, Phil, the government, e.g. the SNP, would have been fighting against it, an independence bill, which is ridiculous. Um, instead of shouting for general edges, and I mean, I, I see Nicholas shouting about seeing off four prime ministers and she'll see off the next one all this. It's all about her. I mean, who cares how many you've seen off love? You should be ashamed that there's been five British Prime Ministers. And let's be honest, five of the biggest numpties ever. Um, and we have not advanced the cause. I mean, and especially now, the British Union has never been weaker. It's never been more chaotic. Now is the time to strike, Phil. You're on mute, mate. You're on mute. No, you're hundred percent right. We're we're kind of repeating ourselves here to in one in one degree. You know that we all we've been saying this for a long time. Um, what what Eva says is bang on the money, and uh, you know, and and I'll, I'll I'll say it right now. The 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 twenty say you get twenty Alba uh, MSPs in every political party. At, at least there's there's a, a larger proportion of people in the Alba party who are committed to independence or pushing it. You can't say that for the SNP. Or we wouldn't be in a nickel has failed. This is the definition of failure. Your prime objective, you were handed a mission. This is your this is your mission, said Alex Salmond. If you choose to accept it, you take up the gauntlet, you carry on what we've started here in 2014, and you deliver a Scottish independence. I did a, a cold hearted calculation. I did. Um, and it was based on the demographics of who voted. 
how and how they voted in that election. And apart from uh, incoming English, mostly English people, eighty um, percent, it was seventy three percent, seventy or seventy three percent over sixty fives voted no, and seventy seventy three percent of under eighteens voted yes. So I did a quick calculation because this is what I do, and uh, I said, okay, if nothing else changes in five years, just by the way people die, because people die, older people are the ones that usually die, then we're going to get that 45, 55 reversed, and we will get a yes vote. Now, that's a cold-hearted statistical review, and in a base level, I'm not an expert, it's just something I, I, I did. We've had Brexit, we've had, <laughs> we've had clown after clown, we've had, with the financial capitalism, the deconstruction of the NHS, that the list is going on, all these things that should be adding to reasons to why our leaders should be jumping, jumping at this opportunity. And they should have taken it by now. As the clock went down and as we started to see baby boxes, we thought, okay, good, good, because we're waiting. We were, we were waiting to see what Nicola was going to do. We saw all the stuff Alec did. What, 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 so what's Nicola going to do? Okay, she finished a lot of the stuff that Alec did, which is great. That's fantastic. But what has she done? What? How has she taken us from 2014 when she was handed the keys? She was handed the keys, and what did she do? Nothing. We're no further forward. That's disgraceful. That I, I, I think it's too late now. I think we need to get rid. I think she's... I want, I want ready her. She needs to go. She needs out. She needs gone. And and the the clowns that she surrounded herself with the people. You want to see the people that are getting elected now in councils all around Scotland because they they kowtow and 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 nod they're like nodding donkeys to this garbage that the the SNP is currently spitting out. It's it's sickening. And you know you you. We thought we were all talking about there's a whole bunch of stuff. We may need, we need not wake up tomorrow because of what's happening in Ukraine and nuclear war, right? But what can we do about that? Well, you put your own house in order first. And it starts with your local, for Eva Club Manager, for, uh, for Yvonne, it's down in the borders. For me, it's Coatbridge. And there's shysters in Coatbridge and the local authority and the SNP and the local SNP as well. Shysters. And we need red. So you need to work at that and put your own house in order. And then we get together with those who have their house in order or semi-order. We pull together and we get independence because it's the only way we can save our people from the damnation that's round the corner. We're allegedly, let's be positive, everyone. We're allegedly a year away from this proposed referendum on independence. Now, call me a cynic. But by now, if I was a year away, I would want to know... What, how are you going to get, um, how you plan to get back into the EU? You know, your true position, you know, with the currency. I would like to know about borders. I would like to know about defence. But there's nothing. There's nothing except the Growth Commission, which will, means you can't get back into the EU because you can't get with a shared currency. It means that London's still controlling your economy. Nuts. What kind of independence is that? Well, as... as uh... John Nicholson said, wait and see. To all of those uh, questions, that's what they're saying. Wait and see. And I've, I've, uh, somebody sent me this, which is every front page on the, um, the National, which has uh, said uh, it's coming, FM, get ready for Indiref 2, now let us win independence. Sturgeon, IndyRef2 will be at the heart of our campaign. These front pages have been, you know, we're just constantly being lied to and we need to get angry and we need to say enough. Um, and, and I think we're getting to a situation now where there'll be a trigger and all the anger and frustration that people are feeling will boil over. When it does, um, that's when I'm confident that Alibo will be able to step in and, uh, and, and show some leadership because, my God, that's what we desperately need. The SNP um, 
are bereft of ideas. I'm sick of hearing about that baby box, Phil. Um, you know, that when you ask people what's happened since Alex Salmon's left, um, we're told, well, there's the baby box. And it is a great idea, fantastic, but a bloody baby box is not going to deliver independence. Um, and that's a, that's a fact. So um, there will be a trigger. There will be a moment where, and I, I think we're probably weeks away from it now, where something will happen. Something, you know, like a Rosa Parks will say, no, I've had enough. I'm not getting up. I'm not giving way. And, and uh, you know, her act of defiance was the trigger that needed uh, the civil rights movement to explode in America. I'm sure something will happen here where people will say, that's it, we've had enough. We can't believe the SNP anymore. They're so intoxicated with uh, the shenanigans of Westminster, um, we've lost them. You know, we, we've, uh, they're gone. Uh, with the exception of maybe two or three. I mean, there's Joanna Cherry, how she can stand the stench of the hypocrisy around her is is, uh, is beyond uh, me. But, um, yeah, you know, the, the, the SNP in Westminster is lost now and uh, we need to um, just forge ahead with uh, our own ideas. We can't rely on the SNP anymore. And there's still a whole raft of people inside the SNP who have yet to waken up. I mean, for me, it wasn't a gradual thing. It happened virtually overnight. And when I talk to people, they say it happened, you know, very, very uh, quickly. So, I think that there's still a lot of people inside the SNP who will wake up and just think, yeah, we have been lied to. And they don't have to come and join Alipa. They can form their own movement. You know, we just need the independence movement needs to grow. People need to get angry and we need to um, to push. And, and, and uh, Holyrood might, you know, might be or should be our target forget westminster just let's focus on uh, on changing things in hollywood they need a bloody good shock and i think one's coming okay, maybe on that um eva what I, I i was horrified today we've talked about it often on here about um scotland produces like 97 percent of its electricity from renewables um and exports 25 percent of england's electricity to it for a start but we're going to get rolling blackouts this winter. Why, 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 why a country that's exporting energy um, is going to have rolling blackouts? I mean, I, and I, I hate to sound like a, a, a cynic, but I don't know who's going to get more. Us or London? My money's on Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland to suffer the most. That's just a fact. And the north of England? Um, oh. Could that be the trigger? The thing is, Roddy, as I said at the beginning, I'm sitting here on Beach Boulevard in Aberdeen I'm looking out of the North Sea. The waves are crashing in. It's almost a howling gale. I can see ricks out there and I can see supply ships, rescue ships. Um, there's oil and gas installations down the coast from here. Under no circumstances should we ever be contemplating blackouts in Scotland. If there are blackouts, it's because we're being royally shafted, not just by Westminster, but by our own democratically elected Scottish government who do not seem to have the political will, the ability or the strategy to stand up and fight for what is ours. That's what's wrong. You know, we have elected a, a government of spineless, self-serving sycophants, if you ask me. And on that note, when we're shouting about looking for a vote or what our priorities are, I see last night that it was a tweet by our First Minister, and it's about a vote. And what she says is, you can vote for the new USA in Scotland official tartan at the link in USA Ambassador UK post below. There it is. 
vote for your favourite tartan for America. That's the priority. Now, the length of time it took her to write that tweet, she could have signed off an instruction to every one of her MSPs to charge on with either lodging that referendum bill in the Scottish Parliament or creating the constitutional convention that she promised the best part of three years ago. There's a million and one things that she could have done to further the cause of Scottish independence while she was messing around in bookshops or American tartans. You know, it's, it's beggar's belief. Um, the, the priorities of this government are entirely skewed. And, and as Yvonne says, it may very well be time to just leave them behind um, and everybody else who favours independence get on with it, despite the SNP. Um, on that note, actually, Roddy, I get a lot of correspondence now from folk that I've never met. Um, some come by way of messages via social media, but some people still like the art of the good old handwritten letter. And I'm now in a course of correspondence with a great guy. I haven't met him yet, but I'm looking forward to his name's James Rankin, he's from Cumbernauld, and he wrote to me with a fantastic proposal, which is, why don't we have Saltire Week, 23rd yeah. to 5th November, every household in Scotland flies a Saltire. Get one in your garden, get it in your front window, get it in your car window, stick it on the back of your rucksack on your way to school, your way to work on your bike, whatever. Raise the profile of the Scottish Parliament. you know. We're a nation, get us on the map again. On every surface, everywhere, slap a salt tire on it and raise the profile of this country, raise our heads above that parapet and say to the Scottish Government, get the job done. Quite right. I'm all for that. We support that here on PRISM. I'm afraid, my friends, as always, the clock has beaten us. Um, a few minutes have finished uh, housekeeping. I want to thank Hazel, who stepped in at the last minute to help us put this out. We've had a few wee technical difficulties today, but I think we got through it in the end. Um, and also, the the two Scottish prisoners shop will be opening shortly. You've all I've been sending out. You've seen the stuff we're doing, the t-shirts, the the polo shirts, etc. And I want to thank the generosity of you viewers who helped us last week with the very uh, extensive costs in sterling. Your generosity. Um, is boundless and uh, we're very touched by it um, but in the future we hopefully will never again be in that position because you're all going to be wearing great t-shirts and great polo shirts and that will fund when we do our, fam do our famous tour which we're, we're planning on but until we see you all again next week you take care now to the Scottish to a Scottish prism. Brought to you by Barhead Boy.